Hey there, it's Chris from Good Roads, and I am in the process of building a skateboard company. And in order to help do that, I've been developing a technique to 3D print skateboard molds. I've released an open source version of these molds, and last week I just released a really refined, polished version of the mold set. And starting today, I'm slowly dipping my toes in the water of offering those molds for sale pre-printed. It's been great sharing my R&D as I've gone through this process. It's been awesome getting feedback from the community, and especially cool seeing other people take my techniques and using them to make their own molds. But there are a couple questions that come up over and over again, and since I'm gonna start offering these for sale, I figured it was time that I do my best to try to answer some of them for you. Hopefully you guys can make use of this information so you can print yourself better molds more easily and ultimately make really good boards. Let's start with a big one. Probably the most common and most important question I get about this style of mold is how much clamping force can they survive? And the completely accurate answer is, I don't know for sure, but when I first started making molds in this style without any top and bottom layers, just relying on the infill grid, I printed a bunch of these cubes, 10 centimeter cubes, with different amounts of infill, planning to crush them with my electric press to see how much force they could stand or how much infill I needed. And I never made it past the first one because 10% infill bent the frame of my press before crushing the printed part which was pretty shocking to me. But I recently slapped this thing together. I was trying to make some apple cider, but it's basically a bottle jack press. So let's give it a test using the only bottle jack that I have, which clocks in at two tons. That was kind of fun. Exploded. So at first, seeing that, you might think, eh, that's a bit of a disappointment. It can only hold up to two tons of pressure. Well, let me get technical for a second and we'll talk about this. The surface area of these test pieces converted from metric to imperial. I'm gonna use imperial because uh, PSI is a little bit easier for me to wrap my head around, but the surface area is about seven and a quarter inches square. And when I was trying to crush it in my janky A-frame press, I can tell you that the bottle jack was just about bogged down. I was having a really hard time putting any more force into it. So let's ballpark it and just say that it was putting out 4,000 pounds or two tons. And I got my notes here so I can make sure I got my numbers right, but 4,000 pounds over 7.25 square inches puts us at about 550 PSI. The surface area of a full set of printed molds is 296 square inches, so if we're applying the same degree of force to a whole mold that we applied just to this small cross section, we would be putting out around 163,310 pounds. Divided by 2,000 pounds per ton gives us a pressing rate of about 82 tons. Holy crap. I think the heaviest tonnage DIY presses that I've seen use dual 20 ton bottle jacks, which is less than half of an equivalent force that we applied to our test blocks. As long as my math's right. And I don't know about you guys, but that's pretty mind blowing to me. Also, check this out. That is more than enough force to press a board. Just to further illustrate the point, here I've got a rejected mold segment that I discarded when I was refining my print settings. It's got 15% infill at a 0.8 millimeter line width, so let's throw it under the jack using the whole surface area of those two wood blocks, which is about 25 square inches. Okay, that's getting unsafe. Here, come take a look at this. Now, admittedly, that frame is not particularly well built, but the wood was starting to bust apart well before the printed part started to fail. 
So this was a cool little test run. I still don't know for sure how much force these printed parts can take, but I am constantly impressed with how much strength we can get out of so little plastic. And even without concrete numbers, it's really interesting to see these parts fail, see how they fail, and start to get sort of an intuitive sense of how much force they can take. And based on the results of this experiment, chances are good that even if you are using a high tonnage press, you can 3D print a mold that will survive. Remember, I was doing this at extremely low infill settings, so you step it up, you get more strength. The next set of questions that I get a lot relates to that grid infill, and it's how long does it take to print, and how much plastic does it use? This latest mold kit printed at 15% infill, 0.8 millimeter line width, one wall, and no top and bottom layers, takes just over four kilograms of filament. And it takes about 100 total hours of print time split between the different segments of the mold. Which is a lot. It's more than I thought it was. I guess until now I've kind of been on autopilot when I printed my molds. Listen, if you're planning on printing a set of these for yourself, I highly recommend that you use gradual infill steps. For my personal molds, I usually do 20% infill with one transition down to 10% at about 8 millimeters from the surface. And for me, that gives a good enough mix of surface area and strength for the presses I'm using. However, it's pretty butt ugly. All these little globs of plastic just aren't up to snuff for me. So in order to make sure I'm getting something nice and polished into your hands, the molds from the shop are going to be printed with a consistent infill throughout. Which means they're going to cost a little bit more, but it also means that they are going to be super tanky. Okay. So at this point, I hope that I've gotten some good information out there that'll help you guys print better molds. I've got a lot of experience with this technique and my most recent mold set, if I do say so myself, is killer. I'm really proud of it. So I'm gonna take the leap and start trying to make these available for purchase. And I'm a little nervous about it. Production on that scale is a completely different ballpark from anything that I've offered before. So here's what I've decided to do. I'm gonna do a limited pre-order and sell a couple mold sets at a discount while I'm still kind of getting my logistics together. As far as price, these mold sets take nine pounds of plastic and lock down my printer for almost five days. So that gives me a sense of production cost, and I also looked at some other offerings on the market, and my buddy Bo over at Open Source Skateboards, he offers CNC foam molds starting at 100 bucks and CNC wood molds starting at 800. Check his stuff out, by the way. He does really great work. I think my 3D printed molds are actually right smack in the middle, both in terms of production costs and in terms of strength. So I figure the price should be right smack in the middle too. For the full release, the mold sets are going to be 450 bucks, but if you get in on this limited pre-order, I will print you a set for $360. That's a 20% discount. And it's also a board sport relevant number, 360. Yeehaw. And on a personal note, if you pre-order one of the mold sets, even with the discount, it's one of the biggest things you can do to help Good Roads as a company grow. Being able to offer these molds to y'all is something I am really excited about, and your support in making that a reality means a lot. So, sappy stuff out of the way, I am stoked about this whole situation. I cannot express how cool it has been to see other people out there taking my techniques and using them to develop their own molds. I mean, there's even someone out there working on a mold set so that they can press POW surfers using 3D printed molds using my same infill grid technique. It makes me so happy that I can help break down those barriers and get you guys doing the thing that's the whole reason I started this channel to begin with. Making your own boards! And on that note, next week we're going to return to the wild world of me scaling up production from a hobbyist to a small shop. So if you want to see that and a ton of other awesome DIY board sport content, just go ahead and subscribe. If you got questions or comments, leave them down below. I read them. I try to get as much good information back out to you guys as I can. This video is me doing just that. So, you know, join the discussion. Huge shout out as always to my supporters over on Patreon. Y'all give them a hand because without their contributions, I probably would not have developed these techniques as quickly and as thoroughly as I have. They really are, they really are a huge help. As always, I love having you along for the ride. So until next time, I'll see you soon. Oh, a very gentle tap, very gentle tap this week. Oh my God. All right, on to the nightmare that's gonna be editing this. I feel like I got my math wrong because I don't believe the parts of that's wrong. <laughs> but, you know, math says they are, so hey.